In today's video, we're gonna cover how to make classic 90s trap. I'm gonna show you tips on sound selection, sound design tricks for that original trap sound, drum pattern ideas, and a lot more. So let's get into it. To make this style of old school trap, there are a lot of small techniques that you need to know. This can be the difference between a good beat and a bad one, so let's go over what these ideas are. But while you're here, you might as well like and subscribe. It costs you nothing and it really helps me out and I'll love you forever. So hit one of those buttons, it really means a lot. Thanks. So I'll start this beat by using strings, which is a common core sound in many 90s trap beats. But the types of strings that we're going to use is different than what you might expect. As you know, there are expensive plugins that you can use to get real authentic sounding strings that sound like they came from an actual recording. But that's the opposite of what we want. With a lot of these old school trap beats, many of these sounds were actually gotten from keyboards and they don't particularly sound real or authentic because of hardware limitations. But that's actually what we want for our beat. We want those cheaper, inauthentic sounds. So that's why I'm using Expand. This is a plugin I recommend to many new producers. You can get it for like $10 on sale often. And this is full of sounds that are similar to what we're looking for. Again, this doesn't necessarily sound like an authentic string recording, but again, that's perfect for what we want. So to help this sound even more old school, I'm gonna use Reels, which is a tape emulation plugin. And as you can hear, it degrades the audio quality, but it also does one other thing that's really useful here. Many tape emulation plugins will take your sound and put them into a narrow stereo field. You can hear the difference as I adjust this dial. And this is actually what I want. I want to narrow the space that my sounds are in to help the beat sound rougher. By doing this, the sounds in the beat won't sound as clean or as defined, but again, that's kind of the point. It's how many 90s beats sounded. So let's make these strings sound thicker by taking the exact same pattern and duplicating it down into a lower octave. And here, the thinking is the same. Again, I definitely can go ahead and clone this pattern out and use an entirely different string preset for this layer, which is a common way to help strings sound more real and robust and authentic. But again, that's not what I want for this beat. So I'm just gonna use this one sound to play both of these patterns. Also be aware that tape emulation plugins may also constrict the frequency space of your sounds as well. So if you add sounds into particularly high or low frequencies, you may find that they get cut off. And that's why I'm gonna use this EQ here to boost those lower frequencies to help that sound in the lower frequencies be more present. All right, this is a good foundation to build upon. Next, I'm gonna introduce a dark spooky bell into this beat, which is a common sound for that 3-6 Mafia crunk old school trap sound. But right now this bell sounds too clean, so let's use some emulation plugins once again. This time I'm gonna use Decimort, which I like using when I'm working with higher frequency sounds. It can really help you recolor those higher frequencies in a rougher way. And one thing I wanna point out, you'll notice with both of these patterns so far, I use notes that are a half step away from each other. This is what helps build that darker feel when building your patterns. So this sounds cool to me so far, but this loop does need more. So let's also bring in this dark sounding piano into the beat next. Again, I'm not going to use Keyscape or any expensive plugin like this. I'm just sticking with Expand here. And I'll do the exact same technique of layering with his piano as I did with the strings. So with these three sounds, we have the big pieces of the beat in place. But with many of these old school trap beats, you'll hear that there's a lot of detail, a lot of small samples that are used to fill up space in the beat. And this is an approach to sampling that you might not be used to. Instead of using the sample as the core sound and building around it, I'm gonna sort of switch that around and use the samples as the way to build around the sounds that are in my beat. So I'll start with this sample here. The reason why I chose the sample is because it's an isolated sound. 
If I try to use a sample with tons of layers and vocals, getting it to fit in this beat in a balanced way is just gonna become much harder. So I'll take the sample and I'll even use some EQ to isolate what I want from the sample even more and build a simple pattern that fits. Let's use the same approach with yet another sample. Here I have this vocal sample. And since this sample is even more minimal and simple, it's just a single vocal note basically, I will make a slightly more complex pattern and create something that's a little bit more musical. I'm liking this so far. By the way, I know some of these techniques might be a bit hard to do, so if you want my help with your beats, I'm gonna take a second to let you know about my online beat making program, Better Beat Maker. It's a program that helps non-musicians become beat makers. One member of mine mentioned that after 15 years of making music, he felt like this program is the best musical education tool that he's ever come across. And I've had tons of members say they've tried all of the other courses, but Better Beat Maker was just what they came back to again and again because this is so much better than the rest. So if you're serious about becoming a beat maker, my members will tell you that Better Beat Maker comes highly recommended. A link is in the description box below if you're interested in checking it out. But back to this beat. I'm gonna keep on using some more samples to add more detail into the beat, more ambience and atmosphere into the background mainly though. Alright, so let's move on to the drums next. Trap drum patterns in these kinds of beats are built in a very particular way, and there are some things that you need to keep in mind. For the drum sounds, I'm gonna be using a beat batter kit called the Dirty Trap Drums. They aren't sponsoring this video, by the way, they don't even know I'm doing this, but this is a kit full of dirtier trap drums, which is exactly what I want for this beat. And beat batter just makes great drum kits, so I just wanted to share. First off, let's talk about hi-hats. With modern trap beats, you might be used to using techniques like pitch rolls and controlling the panning to introduce more detail into your patterns. But these are techniques that you want to avoid when making old school beats. For the most part, these ideas just weren't used. The only techniques that were used were things like note rolls. So that's all I'm gonna stick to here. With the snares, again, just simple snare rolls were common in these kinds of beats as well. I even noticed that changing the velocity of those snares in a snare roll wasn't done either, so keeping them at a consistent volume is an idea that you can use. Next, we'll add in the kick pattern. Now let's talk about 808s and how they were used differently from how they are used now, typically. With modern trap beats, distorted 808s are common. But with old school trap beats, cleaner 808s are often more used. So I'm gonna use this 808 here, which is less colorful to start with. And I'll even go the extra step and remove some of that distortion with an EQ. So we are mostly just left with sub. And 808 patterns were also different. There weren't any slides or anything advanced like that. 808s were basically just used like most other sub bass tones, just very simple patterns. Next, I'm gonna add an effect onto the master to help create even more of that old school feel. A slight touch of decimal will do the trick, I think. Another staple of these 90s trap beats were the use of vocal samples during the beat for parts of the arrangement like the intro or the hook. So we may as well move on to talking about the arrangement and start thinking about the different ideas that we can use for the different sections. We'll start off by making an intro. I'll grab the string pattern that I created here, but I'm gonna create something slightly different for just the intro. I'm also gonna use some of those smaller details for the intro as well as this Memphis vocal. Then after the intro, as we get into the full beat, I'm gonna use some typical transition sounds and I don't wanna do any advanced automation or anything. Again, just keeping it simple and straightforward. Go, 
I think this amount of layers and sounds for the verse section might be a bit too much, so let's rearrange some of these layers and rethink this arrangement overall. I'm going to move this vocal layer and some of the detail from this section of the beat and I'll use them for a switch up right afterwards. And for this switch up, let's try and build something more substantial. I'm going to delete a couple of these patterns just to introduce a little bit more room for some new sounds and patterns that I can introduce into the switch up here. So let's bring in this string here. I'm going to create this pattern that's highly rhythmic and sits in a higher frequency. This will help fill up the space that is now missing after removing those layers from this section. But even with these new layers, this section still feels a bit empty, so let's bring in yet another sample. I'm going to build a smaller pattern that just sits in the background, again, just yet another layer of detail. So that's the verse done. Up next for the hook section, let's bring back many of the sounds and the patterns that we used, as well as that Memphis vocal sample, and we'll even add a new layer of strings for the hook as well. And that sounds cool. There we have it, our old school trap beat is done. If you've enjoyed this video, think about hitting like and subscribe. And again, check out betterbeatmaker.com if you want my help with your beats. My free drum kit's available in the description box below as well if you wanna check that out. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week.